Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I just want to do a quick video showcasing how we can set up a relatively simple login system using Spring Boot Security and specifically using a Java Web Token, also called the JVT. And I have already created a project that kind of works. So, firstly, we're just going to quickly showcase the main concepts. We're then going to go through some of the code, not all of the code, as that quite a bit. But I will leave a link in the description to a GitHub page where you can have a look at all your code yourself. But in general, the basic concept is that we would, I'm going to be using Postman to actually showcase how it works, but let's say we have some kind of endpoint called slash hello. And if I now run this code, and we then want to try to hit this hello endpoint, we've then added some security, meaning we get a 403 forbidden if we're not kind of locked in. And the way we are going to be locking in is that we're going to have some kind of login page, which is going to be open. So do not require any authentication. In this case, my slash auth slash login then says username and a password. I've hard coded some users and password for this case. Not very proper in a real example, but just to showcase how it works. So we have a user with the username user and a password password. And using Spring Security, which add almost all of this basic authentication, we then using my like custom setup, it's going to be creating a JVT, so Java Web Token. Which then kind of holds the information that we are logged in. We can then send this Java web token as a part of the header in following request to showcase that we are logged in. So, the simple example, so all slash login, we send a valid username and password. We then get this Java web token where it's common that we add barrier first to showcase it's a Java web token. I will then take this web token and inside my localhost 880 slash hello, inside my headers, I will now add a new header called, just again showcase, if we do not have this header, we get for be forbidden. But if we add an authentication header called authentication and add the value of our JVT, so our barrier plus our web token, we should now be able to see that we actually get, in this case, just printing simple hello world and a 200 OK. And then to go through how this actually works, is that we first of all have to make good application. We have our rest controllers with our slash auth and our other rest controller with our slash hello. These are just normal Spring Boot. We're not going to be talking too much about these. Our slash auth controller then have this open endpoint. It's going to show shortly how it's going to be open. But we then have a token service and a login service. We just quickly login service is going to be very, very basic in this case. We just have some hard coded users. So a user and password and an admin admin. When I then pass my user DTO, which is just my username and password, I then simply check if the user is matching any of the users in my hard coded user map. We then return in this case an optional of one, meaning normally I would do the optional of the user ID, but in this case I'm just hard coding as to always be one, as there is no user ID connected to these users, but just in general, understand would have an optional which can contain data or not data. so. If the username and password is correct, both matching a user in our database and the password is going to be matching, we return an optional of the user ID, otherwise it's going to be empty. And our login service then used in our auth controller, then simply access or create a token using our JVT token service. It's just something I have created, generating a token based on the user ID. Again, in this case, it's a bit fictional. And we then pass some kind of role. As the Spring Boot security needs some kind of basic role, we're not going to be using the roles to anything, but we just need to pass a user role as we need a role. Otherwise, we're going to have some other issues. And in my case, we then generate this token and we then return it to the user in a response entity with the barrier part in front of it. And if we're then going to have a look at how the JVT token service works, is that we're actually using a few libraries. And one of them is called JJVT, which is like a Java library that allows us to relatively easily create these web tokens. And we then also need to Java XB, which allows us to do some more of the hashing. We of course have our Spring Boot starter, just a basic web, and our Spring Boot starter security. And note, as soon as you add the Spring Boot starter security dependency, you're going to have authentication on all your endpoints, and everything's going to be blocked by default. But first, let's have a look at how we create our Java Web Token. And then we can have a further look into how we actually manage our security part. 
But first, the Java Web Token. I have created a Java Web Token service. We have two properties from my application property folder. Uh, valid validity, so how long is the token going to be valid? And we then need a secret in the back end, which is going to be a secret, which is going to be used to validate the Java Web Tokens in the future. Because this allows us to create a Java Web Token. And when we then retrieve a token from the user, we can ensure that it has not been tampered with. Just a general concept is that this ensures that the Java to Web Token was generated by us by the backend and have not been changed at all because then it would not match with the secret any longer. But then in our Java Web Token service, a few helper methods. This is not going to be used right now, but we can demonstrate shortly that because we add the user ID to the token, we could then in future requests also retrieve the ID from the token and thereby then always know which users actually logged in at earned at any current point of time, which can then be used to modify data based on the perspective of a given user. But in general, we would like to at first generate a token and we then simply have claims. So more or less just data inside the token where we for example would add role. We can also set the subject, which is like the main important part of our token, which in this case is just going to be our user ID. And then using the JVTS library we just discussed, we can then simply build it using a builder. We add the claims at the subject. We create the issue that I'm just going to make current time. We set the expiration to be the current time plus our validity defined in our property. And we define a signing algorithm. In this case, we're just going to be using HS512. And of course, we pass it our secret to so then kind of sign it, which then, when we also would kind of like to validate our token, we can then use the secret again to validate. And that's more or less the basic part of how we then generate the token. So we are now able to call this slash auth slash login. We know it's going to be generating a token. It's going to send it back. And just quickly, because I think it's kind of funny, our token, because it's actually just basic for most of it, we'd go into sites like um, jvt.io, where we can actually decode our token. And we should here be able to see that we know the hashing algorithm. It's the red part. We then have a base64 payload containing all our data, for example, our sub, so the user ID we defined. The role we define expiration time, it's the most interesting parts. And then also have the signature. And one of the things to note is if I change, for example, the ID without having the secret from the backend, even if I change it back to one, I would change the entire JVT and it would no longer be valid. That's what makes it safe, more or less. But that's like the first part of generating the token. Then we also need to kind of validate the token, which is done by Spring Boot more or less automatically by creating a JBT request filter component extending once per request filter, allowing us to override the do filter internally, which is then going to be called on every request hitting our backend. This then allows us to, on every request, extract the authentication header. We then ensure that it starts with barrier and then it's not null. Then we extract the token, so remove the barrier part. We then use our, again, our JVT token service to authenticate this time. And by authenticate, we simply just use the JVTS library once again. So then pass it with the sign key, so our secret. And this then allows us to extract the claims. And one thing to note, how Spring Boot security very much work when working inside these Built internally is that we are going to be passing through multiple steps of kind of checks. And if all the checks succeed without causing any exceptions, in the end, we will then set the context to authenticate it and we would pass the successfully created authentication object, which then allow us to be authenticated. If our JVT token service that get authentication fails, so cause an exception, for example, let's say the JVT token is not valid. This entire part would fail. It would be caught by this catch part, and we'll set it on HTTP status to unauthorized, as well as not doing a filter chain dot do filter. And if we return here without doing the do filter part, Spring Boot automatically knows that something went wrong, and that we actually did not manage to successfully authenticate the user for this endpoint, and we'll get a fault free. I hope that's kinda understandable because it's 
it's a bit complicated, but the main concept is simply that we're doing some kind of authentication. If everything goes well, we get an authentication object. We then set this object in the authentication context, security context from Spring Boot, which then notifies Spring Boot that we have this authentication set, and we do a filter, like continue the filter chain here. This then allows Spring Boot to know the user logged in, and everything should be good. And we will thereby allow the use to, for example, the slash hello endpoint. But once again, it's a bit complicated, and Spring Boot have many layers and bunch of things we could do with Spring Boot security, but this is just a very, very like basic setup. And then one last thing I want to talk about, which is also very important, is we can also add a bean called filter chain, which allow us to do some basic like filter rules. So I'd like a filter before. So to add this in part tire once per request filter component. So our like HTTP, so filter before. So again here we clearly define that this filter is added before we hit any endpoint. And we're going to define like the Tyra filter, so this username password authentication filter. And then also very importantly, we can then also on this HTTP, so this HTTP security, which is like the chain of how we hit our Spring Boot application, we can also define if we want to have any endpoints that's going to be open. So on auth, we can then define, for example, that request matches for slash auth slash anything else, commit everything. But for any other request, we would like authentication. So we add authentication by default, which is a very good pattern, and then only open the endpoints we would like to specifically open. In this case, it's a bit wide, but we could also do slash auth slash login to only have this specific endpoint be open. And then just another thing, because this is Spring Boot 3, the way that we're disabling course and CSRF are a bit different, so I just wanted to add it here, but it's not very important for this case, but just to have it as part of the GitHub project. If you want to disable like um, this cross-site reference part, this is how I would disable it. But in general, that is the basic concept. Just once again to sum up, using Spring Boot with a basic JVC, I would have an endpoint that's going to be open for all. I would then use this endpoint to create, using some kind of JVC token service, generate a JVC token, which is then signed with a secret kind of hidden in the backend. We then pass this JVC to the user. The user, or any kind of application, would then use this JVC to then pass it as a header under authentication in future requests to then showcase that they are actually authenticated. And as well as mentioned, you could also use for example, this get user ID from token, then passing the entire HTTP servlet request, then actually get the specific ID that would be hidden inside the payload of the JVT. I'm not doing it in this case, but just to show that we could actually then extract. For example, I could use this inside my test controller. If I just told it I would like an HTTP servlet request, HTTP servlet request. And from this, I can then use my, now I need to do a bit of work, but let's say we would here use our JVT token service, JVT token service, and this would be private final. And we will then add, a, add it as a constructed parameter. It's going to be auto wired. Once again, in the new version of Spring Boot, auto wired is not needed, but I like it because it clearly shows that what we're actually doing. We could then use this service to get our user ID from token, then pass our HTTP server request. It's kind of like the HTTP call to this endpoint. And we would then get an end user ID. And we could do a hello world plus user ID. If we then rerun it, we should be able to see now that we are able to actually extract the user ID from the JVC token and see that it is actually used. Here, as mentioned, the ID is hard coded to one at this time, but that's all that's it. And once again, our entire process is then automatically done by Spring Boot by having a component of JVT request filter, one for request filter, which is then added inside a bean of this specific setup. 
which then allow us to automatically have this entire process more or less handled by Spring Boot. And at the end here, I just want to mention once again, I will put all this on GitHub with a link in the description where you can have a look at it yourself, as I think there's quite a few things to, to see and experience, experiment with, but I hope this basic walkthrough could help to get a, a general understanding of how it actually works. So if you enjoyed this quick showcase, please leave a like and subscribe, and I wish you all a wonderful day.